to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Let me tell you this. Quit this pressure of living a fake life. If all you have is Gary, take it with honor. Whoever has gone ahead of you, those who go ahead of you have a funny way of turning back to make you look like, oh, just to let you know I just ate turkey. God bless you with your turkey. My turkey is here. I am patient enough to let it come. The creative power, the superior power, there is no demon that can stand a transformed mind. I tell you this, your mind is a gate. Let it grow right where you are. You are a man of God, but no one is placing a demand yet on your grace and ministry. Don't start moving around with cards and getting angry and say, Jimmy, is it that you didn't know God called me? Can't you invite me for the prayer meeting? It's a sign you are not growing. Remain in the wilderness and continue to build your mind. When your season of appearing comes, brothers and sisters, you will sit down and wonder and say, you mean life can be this cheap? I'm not in a hurry to go where God has not taken me to. I would rather get there here and be patient. But when I do get there, you will know he took me there. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. Contending for kingdom relevance, the power of transformation. You are global in your approach. No one intimidating you, only inspiring you. Don't gather people in your life to intimidate you. Gather them to inspire you, to provoke you to godliness. If my life is intimidating you, I'm destructive to your destiny. I was almost saying verse 3. Number 3. Jesus. Mm. We will all be great. And the best part is that we will all know ourselves. It's true. What you are receiving is like an infection. You will never be able to undo it. It's true. It's like you gave somebody chloroquine. Huh? And then you tell the person to remove out the chloroquine again. How are you going to do it? It's already there. Just be patient. If it's an itch, enjoy it for, I don't know how long it happens, three to five days. That's how your destiny is. What is entering your spirit and your mind cannot be brought out again. There's only entrance. There's no exit. Once it gets there, by yourself, you will turn and see your life changing. And you say, God, what is, what is going on? Then you will sing this song by yourself. Not as a special number, but a testimony. And they glorified God in me. Number three, let's hurry up. The third key in contending for kingdom relevance is that you must be extremely valuable write it down key number three extreme value those who will be representatives 
of the purposes of God for their generation, please write it down, are not only men and women who will know God. They are not only men and women who will be transformed. Your transformation affects you alone. It is your value that affects others. Your value is proof that you have been transformed. Your transformation blesses you alone. It is your value that now extends to others. And that's when your life begins to be rewarded. When you are valuable. The law of value is a powerful key. That your similarities decide your comfort. It is your difference that decides your rewards. When you are similar with people in many respects, you are able to stay together. It creates a system of accommodation. But for your rewards in life, it is your value and your difference. Whether it is in ministry, whether it is in business, in career, those who are extremely valuable, valuable beyond ignoring, they are the ones who will command influence into this world. Is God speaking to us? Extreme value. Extreme value. Years ago, my dear mentor, blessed memory, Dr. Miles Munro, while he was mentoring me in the area of purpose and value, I didn't, it didn't make sense to me that when you are so valuable, Gentiles will come to your light and they are kings to the brightness of your rising. But today I see it. The proof that you are valuable is that men are seeking for you. If no one is looking for you, it's a message from your future to your today. Upgrade. Be valuable. All men seek for you. Not just to the degree to which you love God, but to the degree to which you have represented value to them. And they will not seek for you empty-handed. They will seek for you with their gold and their silver. They will seek for you with gold. They will seek for you with frankincense. They will seek for you with myrrh. They will never come empty-handed. Your generation is too scarce of value to ignore you when you are valuable. The greed of men cannot stop your reward system when you are valuable. Extremely valuable. When I talk to people and I tell them, what can you do? And they say, I can do this. My next question is, how good are you? I say, no, but God is helping us. That is a religious talk by lazy people. Are we together? It's an excuse. It's proof that they have pegged themselves at a level and would not want to rise higher. Say, no problem. We are and there. No. Oh, you are, you, are, you are a music minister. How good are you? Well, I'm, I'm trying. Trying like what? We live in a world where value is so scarce. When it is truly seen, it is sought immediately. Immediately. I was blessed when my dear brother, the pastor there, sent me a text. You can imagine that he just came here and a woman calls him to give him all of that. Imagine that someone tells him now, that this man of God is a herbalist. He says he's a good herbalist. I, I want that kind of herbalist. <laughs> hallelujah the reason why the excuses they bring in your life is valued is because your value is lower than the excuses when your value rises higher than any excuse that can be brought against you people will ignore even what is obvious to seek you you go to buy suya and you stand and the smoke is all over your face and your clothes but the value is too important for the smoke to deter you. Are we together? You stand there salivating patiently. Two people in front of you and you are not complaining. Your dignity notwithstanding. If you can make the meat go home. It's as simple as that. And the person making it is not in a hurry. He is not in a hurry. If you have a, I didn't force you, you can, and you stand, you complain but remain. You insult but remain. This will be my last time, but remain. It's your last time until after three days when you are hungry again and you go back. When your enemies join to seek you, you are valuable. They search around for alternatives and don't find and say, look, we have to just make do with what is available. When God wants to honor a man, he puts something in your life that is not available anywhere. At least not in that fashion. A few years ago, a man was praying for me, a great man of God. 
I went to see him and sow into his life. And then he looked at me and just laid his hands on, on my head and said, Oh God, create a problem around his region that only him can solve. I said, what kind of prayer is this? Just slapped my head and said, <laughs> oh, If that prayer is answered for your business, you will be afraid. That's the kind of answer to prayers that make people angry. They say, this mama must be using a charm. One of our mothers here gave a testimony recently. When, I, when she, she was telling me about the testimony, I will not mention the details, but it's a breakthrough that God gave her. That it, these are the kind of breakthroughs that if God gives you, you have reached December. <laughs> Even though you are in April, you have reached December, you can start laughing. Seeth thou a man, any man, seeth thou a man, Diligent in his business, there is a promise that he shall stand before the great, he shall not stand before mean men. Let me tell you why you are standing before mean men. It's not because there are powers fighting you alone. There may be an element of that, but let me tell you, your, your mediocrity has authorized a life of average to remain with you. Whether as a man of God, I've challenged you, I've challenged all the people here, the leaders here, and you're a man of God here, I'm challenging you. Don't just stop at the level of sharing and say, oh, the power of God is moving, it's moving. Then one lady now starts rolling around. That, 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 you won't go far that way. You get to a church where it's the ushers that are producing that kind of result. They can't invite you. You must stay with him. Let something from heaven that cannot be faked come upon your life. Remember my teaching on true riches. That, that you have true riches. If all you have in life is what money can buy, you are cheap. If all you have in life is what money can buy, you are cheap. That means you don't have anything to tell Bill Gates. That means you don't have anything to tell Dangote. If God plans a meeting for me with Angote now, what do I have to tell him? God will give you breakthrough. He will look at you and say, what are you saying? There are churches I have gone to, brothers and sisters, with all humility, you will know that the least person in that church is still rich. There are churches I have gone to. You say, may God bless you. They just say, amen. Because they don't, they, 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 God, they, that prayer has been answered. They are looking for something more. What will a king be looking for? What was Sheba looking for when she came to Solomon? Was it what money could buy? Did she not come with gifts that money could buy? I, I pray for you. May God put something on your life that money cannot buy. I say it again. In the name that is above all names. May my God put something upon your life that will make you extremely valuable. Please sit down. The Bible says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Let me show you how people defy being ignored. My house is full of wrappers for my mother. My dear wonderful mother, partaker of value. Are we together now? These guys, a year ago, were student doctors. Nobody was paying them. But because they had been valuable intellectually now, they received salaries. Someone has been complaining that they fired him from railway corporation since 1996. Till tomorrow, he didn't reinvent himself to be relevant to a world. It's not enough to be a graduate. You must be available and you must be usable. Many graduates are not valuable. They are just educated. To be educated and to be valuable are two different things. To be valuable means to be needed and useful. To be valuable means to not be easily replaceable. I can cook. Like who? I like my food. Are you the only one who will eat it? I can preach. 
I'm a man of God. I can sing. You mean you can sing? Yes. God gave me songs. Okay, sing something. Let's hear. And you stand and you are twisting your tongue around and the, the preacher sings more than you. Why should he invite you when you can sing too? I listened to a particular gospel artist. Um, I think it was yesterday night while I was about to sleep. And I was so blessed. I said, Kai, this man is anointed. I truly see why people seek for him. Value. You see... If I were not anointed the way God anointed me, you will think I'm teaching you value simply as a way of excusing the need for anointing. Because that's what many spiritual people, those, especially those of us who are called into the ministry of signs and wonders, we place very little value on these matters. We think they are lesser matters. And so we are the ones who keep rising alone. Whereas those who are, you see, I, I, I fear God and I have conscience. If I'm the only one rising in this ministry, I am failing. No. Your rising is proof that I am rising. If someone gives me 10 naira today for being valuable, I turn and look at you. Have they given you one naira? If they've given you one naira, we rejoice together. That the sower and the reaper rejoice together. But where I'm collecting 200 naira and you are there saying to apostle, this thing you are teaching, it means something is wrong. Either with me or with my doctrine. Are we together? The worship team for years, I didn't allow them to go and have external ministrations. Many of them didn't understand that. They would say, ah, we have been invited somewhere. I say, you are not going anywhere. Not with what you did on Friday. You are not going anywhere. You do that kind of thing, it's only in Zaria they will invite you. You will never go outside Zaria. Stay. But today, by the grace of God, God has worked on them. And these gentlemen are singing songs that people are singing, not only in other parts of this nation, but even outside this nation. It's called value. When you decide to be small in life, you are going to be angry. Because most of the people who will rise will be people you know. You will be very, very angry. There are many angry people. There are people who used to know me years ago. Just like my dear brother would say. You know, most people, I, I returned back from Kano yesterday. Very tired, very this, but most people say, Ah, Apostle, I call, is it that you don't know me? I know you, but... The way life has presented itself is, is such that you have to just be patient with me. Apostle, before, in 2000, one dial and you will pick. Abba, for 18 years, I wasn't doing anything with my life. Value. When you see me settling down to study, you will not know that I'm a man of God. I, Daniel, understood by books. Sit down and study sit down and learn the average sermon as a man of god takes serious time i preach an average of two to three sermons every week you think it just drops from heaven just because i told god gave me the topic he didn't teach me what to say what gives you topic and gives you wisdom you go and sit down and research and learn Are you valuable enough? Listen very carefully. I want you to ask yourself that question honestly. I'm not saying are you valuable. You are. But are you valuable enough to bring to your life the kind of influence? Are you valuable enough worth following? Can someone follow you and know that I'm following something superior? The guy who sang this song, E. Daniels, the blind guy. I didn't even know he was blind. Went to minister somewhere with him. Blind gentleman. And my goodness, when this guy climbed the stage and held on to his guitar, with my two eyes, I still cannot play what that guy was playing. Songs from the Spirit, backed up by extreme skill. This guy was playing and playing, and I said, what is this? We are on our way to Kano. Well, just listening to songs. And when it got to his song, I just kept quiet. The whole car was just filled with the presence of God. Value. 
but someone whose eyes are whose eyes can see and will not do anything and is waiting for god to do this let me tell you this if you are a parent here let me advise you especially for your male your your sons start training them to be responsible early in life sometimes this dashing excessive dashing of money and things is why many young men are lazy pain is a language that can teach people money is not the only thing you should give people you can give them advice they don't like advice they don't like counseling but they like something they can hold and exchange immediately be valuable I made up my mind that in the name of Jesus, every area that God would have me function in, I will be extremely valuable. Average is terrible because you are neither here nor there. I'd like you to enter a covenant with yourself that whatever I know there is grace for me to do, I will be, I will be the best and I will not rest. If you tell me you want to go into the academia, and you just stop at MSc or BSc, I know that you are not going to have a voice. There are people here who are lecturers in the academia. Pastor Alpha, I think he just, he just did his, his externals and all of that. And a number of people here. You shouldn't stop till you become a professor. I'm not called into the academia. So you find the professor version of what God called you to do. That's the thing I like with Hausa people. Even if you tell them to peel orange, they become so professional when they stand and they are peeling that orange. They peel it in a way and manner that wants you to go back to them. Mastery. Rewards are for masters. Entry level in life is how you suffer. You never make any relevance being at entry level. A time will come where everybody around you is great. May the great call you great. When the great call you great, you are great indeed. But you must walk. Write it on your note. I receive grace to be diligent. The anointing does not cover for the place of hard work. See, I, I, I'm sorry if I'm using myself and it looks like pride. Forgive me. But if at this level I'm still working hard and you are sleeping, you are joking. Let me inspire you. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm being careful to use myself so you don't think that if at this level have not gone to bed and at the level you are you are sleeping it's a sign that you are far from influence i have food to eat i can eat whatever i want to eat but then you are still awake Shakatos kabarakatosh. new dimensions oh god new levels oh god i come back from a meeting i came back from police academy they gave me this their police uh, this uh, police thing Two of it, that thing that they wear. I told them I'm an affiliate policeman. You can have that and hang it and start sleeping and remain there until the world moves ahead of you. And then you wonder, why don't people listen to me again? They said, because you stop being relevant. You see, let me tell you this. As we are sitting now, if someone starts shouting under the anointing, you won't be impressed because you have already seen that standard in me. There will be an appetite in you for what more. When that happens in another meeting, you'll be surprised. But what will bless, it will only bless visitors. But you who is in Koinonia here now, once someone starts shouting under the anointing and moving around, you don't turn and say, hey, what is happening? No. When you have hit a standard, that standard, people get used to it and that's all. You must strive for something more. That's why when they say holy, 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 when they lift their face, they see another dimension of God. Who was, who is, and who is to come. If you are who was, you are in trouble. If you are who is, you will soon be in trouble. There must also be something to come. That was, is, and is to come dimension must work in your life. If I only know he who was, businessman who was, apostle who was, what are you doing now relative to what God is doing? And what are you doing tomorrow? Will our little children need you? Or will you be so irrelevant? They say, I don't know why you people like this man. I'm, I'm telling you things that many of you, 
will not hear easily. Value. I will be wicked to not teach you this. This is what I'm doing in my own life. I have reaped the fruits of value in a way that if God never blesses me again, I am grateful. Sometimes I find myself in circles and places and I just nod my head. I said, ah, who dash monkey banana? If not because of the blessings of value. You will be so valuable when you get to the corridors of power, you will stand and wonder and say, Lord, is this what you can do? They will come and find you with a big bed, but you are crying on the ground. And they say, sir, you should be lying down on this bed. He say, no, don't worry. I'm lying down on the ground because what God has done for me. Too much, oh, too much, oh. Too much, oh, excess love, oh. What's the song again? Love me too much, oh. Too much, oh. Too much, oh, excess love, oh. Listen. This is what many of us are going to use to break the barriers that are in our families. Some of you, your family has not risen anywhere. And all of you are educated. You see, let me tell you this. I want to tell you something that is very uncomfortable. There is no such thing as being educated in our world today. You are either learning or you are out. Educated in terms of formal education is wonderful. But educated to mean I have gathered enough information to make the world hear me is pride. You are joking. If a professor is still reading, writing articles, doing researches, and you just come out, a, a degree right now is almost like, I, I told you about a place that I went to, that the receptionist had two MSCs abroad. Receptionist. Gone are the days where you brag and say, look, I have a degree in A, I have another degree in B. And someone will come who is 18 years and say, I have four degrees. And you stand there feeling foolish. But there is something you can have in both your mind and your spirit that can give you a place that can take away shame. Brothers and sisters, shame and reproach can leave a man. When you stay with God that he put something upon your life, financial shame can leave your life sociological shame can leave your life you never go somewhere and they look at you and say you are not fine let your mind add to your beauty let your value add to your beauty oh you are too short you are too tall you are too fat you are too slim value can make you fit for everything a door that will not open because they will say you are too tall value will reduce you to enter a door that will say you are too short value will make you taller to enter you have taken all my shame. You have taken all my sorrows. You have taken all the sorrows. You have taken all the pain. You have made them yours. I praise to the King. You have taken all my tears. You have taken all lamentation. You have taken all the sorrows. You have taken all the weakness. You have made them yours. Highest praise to the King. Listen, God wants to make this song someone's reality. That you turn and say, Lord, look at how you took away shame from my family. Lord, look at the embarrassment. I'm a man of God. I am called into ministry, but it's like I am not called. But look what you have put upon my life today. I have become Beulah and Hephzibah, the desire of nations. Look what you have done with my family. My mother that was nothing, my brother that was nothing. They kept saying, can anything good come out of my family? But Lord, look what you have done. You have taken me from a donkey. Fanny. value sit down let me give you four 
four things that you should cry for. There are seven of them, but I'll give you four. <laughs> they are called the true riches of the kingdom. I want to teach you what buys money. What buys influence. Influence is a product. It is bought with something. I want to show you the capital that buys influence. Ready? Number one, the capital of light. Light is capital. Illumination, revelation. We use light to buy money as a product. We use light to buy influence. For it is the light that shineth in darkness. Light is capital. Whoever has light can buy anything money can buy. Are we blessed? Number two. The second capital that you need that can buy other things. Listen very carefully and never forget this. I'm only going to give you four. The second, that light, understanding. Write it down. Understanding. The comprehension of the systems of the kingdom. When you have this, you have something money cannot buy. Are we together? Are you ready for the third capital? The third capital is the ability to hear God. If anybody ever told you the ability to hear God is not value, he lied to you. Mm. And thou shalt hear a voice from behind thee saying, 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 this is the way. People prosper in life because the Lord is their shepherd. And if the sheep cannot hear the voice, you will go where the lion is. The forest is a place that is open for every other animal, not just the sheep. It's the shepherd that guides them in the path of righteousness. Otherwise, the sheep can veer off a land that you go and meet a prey that eats you up. The ability to hear the voice of God correctly is value. Let me give you the fourth one. I have a series. That's why I'm not giving you all of it. There's a series, Two Riches. Before the end of the year, we'll teach it. So that you will stop chasing money. You will chase what buys money. I taught you last week. Please come, sir. Give me this water. Come here, Jimmy. Look at this. If this is... I have, let, let me bring out some money. This is a product called a bottle of water. Is that true? I don't know how much they sell this, but you just hold it. Now, if a Jimmy wants this, he needs to have something that can buy it. So if I give you money, you have bought this product. But when you want this, what buys it? If this is the product you want, what buys it? A job? <laughs> Business? No. True riches is the name of the money that buys money. Are we together? It's true. Whoever possesses light must possess this. Whoever possesses understand. He said, with me are riches, wealth, and honor. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. Business or job are simply physical platforms to give the true riches you possess an avenue for expression and a coordinated system for being rewarded. That's all they are. So if all you have and all you are looking for is this, you are going to be a slave to your destiny forever. That's what is happening to many of us now. Anywhere money is, is where you are running to. The money itself is running somewhere. Find out where it is running to. Don't just follow money. Follow where money is going. This money that is running away is going somewhere. Where is it going? It's going to those who possess true riches. Either gotten by occultic powers or gotten from the secret place. When God wants to prosper men, he doesn't give them money. It's an insult if God gives you money. Why will he God give you money? God gives you two riches and compels a territory to identify with that. And you will have this and not know what to do with it. And find out that this is the least of your concerns. He will give you influence that will make people think you have a charm. 
Why do people want to hear you? It's because there is something in your life that cannot be bought in the supermarket. Value. Are we together now? Thank you. You drop it in the offering basket or something. Praise the Lord. Very, very important. The last of them is the anointing. Let me tell you this. The highest manifestation of true riches on earth is the anointing. The highest. Higher than all others that have called. The anointing is the highest spiritual commodity available for purchase and use on the earth. In heaven, the anointing is not the highest. Because we see in the throne room, all the people in the throne room, we don't hear the mention of anointing. So there are things higher than the anointing in heaven. But on earth, the anointing, the valued cherub and the rest, all of them, they don't live in the throne room. They visit the presence of God with the anointing. That means there is something those 24 elders have. There is something those four living creatures have that is not anointing. We will find out. But for now, as given to us, it says the yoke, it shall come to pass in that day. Listen carefully. That the yoke shall be taken from off your shoulder and the burden from your neck and it shall be destroyed because of the anointing. When God wants to use men on earth, he gives them the highest value. The anointing. He can give them in the secret place. And they come out in the open and life starts following them. Where did this shepherd boy, David, smelling sheep but with the anointing? Don't ever ignore a man who has the anointing. He has true riches. It may not look like it. That's why those who seek God, people will say, don't seek God, don't seek God. Balance. What they mean balance is leave God. Don't leave God, oh. You leave the anointing, you suffer in this life. Takes the anointing. The rich are oppressed too. The poor are oppressed. Money cannot buy that. Money can buy the salvation of your soul. Money can buy Panadol. But it cannot cast away demons. So whoever has that ability. Ah! You have taken all my shame. You have taken all my sorrow. You have taken all my pain. You have taken all limitations. You have made them yours. High praise to the King. Koinonia, listen to me. Do you know what you are receiving every week you come and sit down here? You are not just receiving information. There is a transfer, like you do internet transfer. Something is coming on your life. You see, as you keep receiving that, a time will come, you will come out. My brother, my sister, regardless of all other limitations in your life, you will stand in shock when you see those waiting to see you. And you look at their chariots full of gold and silver. And they say, let it be a privilege. Someone's prayer point of 10 years, your, your savings plan of 20 years, the anointing brings it in one day. Let me tell you something that you don't hear me say all the time. And I say this with due respect and honor. Over 70% of those who partner with this ministry are not here. I don't know them. Are we together? Our ministry is full of a lot of young people. And God is helping you all. You are rising. But many of us are not yet there. It will be a terrible thing to begin to yoke you with the bills that run this ministry. When the finance department brings me the bills and I look at it, sometimes I'm surprised. I'm like, what? This is what one department is spending per month? But by the finger of God, when he gives you two riches, it's like a charm. Look at Elisha. Naman, what are you doing in front of my house? How about Elisha come out, respect me? He said, who is leprous? Me or you? Go and bath seven times. He said, respect it while he's talking that jagger. You can choose to remain. Ah, when you have two riches, you command life at your terms. You see, when we talk like this, 
many young people think it's because we are lucky to have been anointed. No, sir. The anointing is a stream of income. Whoever told you the anointing is not important. Whoever mocked and scorned at the anointing. The Bible said, those, those that do wickedly against the covenant, God will corrupt with flatteries. They look at these ordinances and say, don't worry, it doesn't matter. When people talk, look at their results first before you believe them. Don't be a victim of someone's learning process. Then when he corrects himself, you have swallowed up his error and there is no room to correct yourself. Are we together? Yes, Value. Yahweh, Yahweh. Hey, hey. Yahweh. I've given you one, you must know God. Two, be transformed. Three, be extremely valuable. Number four, you must master relationships. You want to contend for kingdom influence, you must master relationships. Not just have relationships, you must master relationships. Everything in the kingdom reproduces on the basis of relationships. If you do not understand relationships, you are not going far in life. What are relationships? I've taught you. They are advantageous connections. Listen very carefully. We call a human being an organism because there is a relationship between every organ, every system, every tissue, every cell. They are connected in some way and they form an organism. Split all of them and keep them around. The bones in the valley of Ezekiel were not an army, although the bones were there. They had to be connected to be an army. Are we together now? If you do not know how to master relationships, then you will never rise to certain levels of influence in business, in ministry, etc. Relationships. Write, please. Let me give you a few things to write and then we'll pray. Is God challenging us tonight? Please be challenged, though. Please be challenged. Relationships are advantageous connections. Write it down, please. I've taught you that the easiest way to succeed in life is through relationships. Just like the anointing, relationships are a stream of income. Relationships can bless you. When you are connected to the right people, you can live off that relationship. Anything money can buy, relationship can pay for it too. But there is a price. There is a price for mastering relationships. Amos chapter 3 and verse 3. The Bible says, can two walk together? Two anything, two people, two, even anything. Can, can your systems walk together except they agree? If the mouth is opening and the legs say, I must move too, there will be trouble somewhere. There is a system of coordination in your body. Right? Can two walk together except they be agreed? Many of us have not mastered valuable relationships. And that's why we never rise. We are born again. We are anointed. But the system for multiplication in our life is not there. So we are just seeds. We never become a harvest. Because we are not connected. It is the relationship between a man and his wife that produces another being. There must be a relationship between your seed and something else to produce more of what you want. You alone carrying the seed of greatness within you cannot make a forest of greatness. You will need another entity that the seed 
will cause another multiplication. Plants know this. Animals know this. But we don't know this with respect to a life of great influence. Are we together? Relationships. You saw the wife of my dear friend, Pastor Petrock, when she came in here, I took out time to appreciate her. Do you know why? Because he's my friend. And I love him. Because she's my friend. And I love her. They're wonderful people. They host me so well every time I have the opportunity to be in Mina. And they give me their very best. They have honored me so much. And I reciprocate it. It's a relationship that we maintain. Are you seeing that now? The, the pastor said when he came here, he saw the workers walking. Do you know because there is a relationship? I love the workers. I don't use them. I love them. And they know I love them. The person who should bless and lift your life, do you have a relationship with him? It's amazing how people just want the anointing to come to them. Who do you think you are? No. Without venison between Jacob and Isaac, there is no blessing. Venison there doesn't mean food or money. Venison is a system of honor. He said, I want to bless you, but as you are now, I'm going to waste my time. Do something. Create a system of honor between me and you, and you are going to receive something on me. Relationships are powerful. Mm. You must learn to master relationships. Relationships don't maintain themselves. I've told you this year, but write it again. All the parties involved must be committed to maintaining themselves. Last year during my birthday, my pastor friend in Lagos, Pastor Shola, they brought a big cake and kept it in front of a big church as if they are idolizing a man. And we're singing happy birthday. I'm here in Zaria and a church in Lagos keeps a big cake to celebrate a man. I don't know how many of my friends have called me now and said, Apostle, come to our region and want to celebrate your birthday. I said, no, 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 please. I, I have phobia for celebrations and all of this. I'm just, just pray for me. And eat the cake on my behalf. Relationship. I can tell you why there's nobody to help you when there's trouble. Because you don't care about anybody. You care about yourself through people. Listen carefully. You care about who? Yourself. Only that you route it through people. When you love people genuinely. And you care for them. And you show them love. You will see how they will kill themselves to defend what you represent. Are we together? Many anointed people are lonely. There's nobody to speak for them and say, there is a man of God we know here. The hand of God is upon his life. He can be invited here. Who are you connected to? Enough to help you rise. Is God speaking to us? A tree only grows because it's connected to the earth. Fruits only remain because they are connected to the branches that are connected to the vine, that is connected to the root, that is connected to the ground. When your mouth throws food, if other systems don't cooperate with it, you can die. I'm not a doctor, but I'm smart enough to know. Are we together? Look at how the systems play. They patiently wait for the mouth to receive the food. Then other systems start playing. Life is systemic. Never forget this. A human being with no respiratory system is almost not a human being. He's dead. There are people that can have one part of their body working and another part not. You see the limitation in their lives. Are we together? Do you have valuable relationships today? If someone decides to come and oppress you, is there a voice that can speak for you? If the devil tries to oppress you, is there somebody you are connected to that you can say in the name of Jesus, this will rise for me? I saw one of our dear babies. I can't wait for the service to finish. Let me give her a very big hug. I was in school of ministry when they brought her. She was so sick. When I saw that dear lady, I saw her adorable baby. The way I hugged her, I prayed for her. I said, Pastor Alpha, please immediately take her to the hospital. They took her there, treated her and all of that. What if I did not know Pastor Alpha? What if we did not know someone in the hospital? What if that girl just dies like that? Then we say, Hakane Ale Ashiria. No relationships. 
Is there somebody you know that you can actually go to now and he will give you money? Not borrowing. Not borrowing. Not everybody is greedy. Sir, I stand before you. I'm trusting God. This is it. My child's school fees. And he says, take because we are related. Look, if you don't have these help structures in your life, you are in trouble. You are in big trouble. Are we together? And if your friends are only Christians, you are still in trouble. Because you live in a heterogeneous world where many Christians, their hands cannot reach the table of influence that you need help from. So you will need to be especially good to those of the household of faith, but be good to all men. The people that transport you here, I don't know how many Christians they are from them. We have never had an occasion to fight. The Nigerian Union of Road Transport Workers, they are Muslims, but we love them. We always do things for them. That's why they can come sometimes, may, they may be here by now, and wait for over 30 minutes, one hour, and they pick you. Relationships. Are we together? Who you are related, let me tell you this. Who hates you doesn't matter, but who likes you matters. <laughs> who hates you doesn't matter. But who likes you in this kingdom? I told you that there are men who you cannot cast out of your life. If God wants to bless you, he will make them like you. But for as long as they don't give you access, you are not going anywhere. They are gates. When God wants to prosper you and the work of your hand, you don't fight them. God touches their hearts to like you. When a man's ways pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. If you want to enter Aso Rock now, whether you like Buhari or not, you are, you are not going to enter out Aso Rock without him. So if God wants you to enter Aso Rock, he will make him like you. Then you enter Aso Rock. Not everything is bindable. That's why there is favor. So that the ones that can be bound, favor will maneuver away in throne. You must write, if you treat everybody the same in your life, the spirit of wisdom is not at work in your life. Everybody cannot be the same in your life. Some of us have this socialist view about life. Everybody is the same. The one who pays your school fees and the one who greets you in the morning, they are the same. The one who prays for you, the one who fasts for you, they are all... In your world, there is no stratification based on value and honor. No. Jesus had three. He had 12. He had 72. He had 5,000. He had all kinds. Don't give everybody equal access to your life. Let them qualify for access through their participation over your success. I love everybody, but not everybody is at the level, uh, same level of relationship. Is God helping us and are we learning? Please say amen. amen. Some of you are praying right now. The answer to your prayers is in a relationship. Oh God, when will this rent go? And God is saying, you better take the law of honor seriously. The law of honor can pay you a rent for 10 years. The law of honor can buy you a car. The law of honor can bring an anointing to your life. You don't insult a man and when you see him, just say, Sean, sir, sorry, I was just thinking before you pass, you just quickly impart my head. It doesn't work like that, sir. Your sarcasm is already a witness before the justice system of God as to why that anointing should not flow to your life. It doesn't matter whether the man of God lays hands on you or not. There are men of God in my life I will never be offended in. If I hear today that they said Joshua Selman is a devil, Joshua Selman is this, I will still love them and honor them. Your connection is how you rise. Learn this. Learn this. I told you Bishop Oedipo's advice that he gave the young minister when he was starting, Pastor Correde. He said, never fight alone. Many of us are fighting alone. No. There must be an alliance in your life for you to prosper. That's why we have something called United Nations. That's why we have something called African Union. Is that true? It's a coalition of people. What relationship is in your life today? I shared this with us already, but let me just run through it. 
how to maintain relationships. Let me give you seven points very quickly in succession. Number one, avoid competitive jealousy. Sorry, I'm rushing. There's already a series on mastering relationships. Get it. You can never relate with people when there is competitive jealousy. You bought this, I must buy too. You have this, I must have too. You are anointed. No, 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 no. You don't do that. Number two, avoid gossip, backbiting, and ill speaking. You never connect with people when you walk in gossip, backbiting, and ill speaking. Never practice that. Number three, very quickly, avoid offense. Offense is the ease with which you get irritated. Offense is the ease with which you get angry. Offense is the ease with which you get resentful. Settle it once and for all that everyone you relate with is not perfect, just like you. So settle it once and for all that imperfection will be featured once and again in your relationship. But let that be too small a reason to cause you to lose the precious things that are associated with relationships. Are we together? Avoid offense. Four, practice forgiveness. It's not enough to not be offended. You must practice forgiveness. Any kind of relationship thrives on forgiveness. There are times you just need to let go and ignore what they thought, what they said, what they did. Just, just let it go. Are we together? Number five, be tolerant. Have a high degree of tolerance. You want to maintain relationships, you must be tolerant. Let me tell you the difference between forgiveness and tolerance. Forgiveness may be an error or a mistake or a weakness that you hope will not happen again. Tolerance is a weakness enshrined in that person that is, is bound to happen again. <laughs> you know, when people are going to get married, a guy loves a lady and he offends her and she says, promise me you will never do it. And the foolish guy has the effort to promise that he will never do it again. Whoever told you you would never do it again? You shouted at me. I don't like it. I'm sorry. This is the last time. I don't know what came over me. You plan to live for 50 years? <laughs> you shouted at your mother. You shouted at your father. You shouted at God. God, the creator of the ends of the earth. And you are here lying just because you want to stand at the altar with a lie. I'll never shall in fact it from... No, no, no. I'm not saying be angry and be foolish. That's, it's not an endorsement for being foolish. I hope you, you understand the balance. But that the wise wife or the business partner or whoever must know that there is a propensity for this. So I must create a system of accommodation. It's called tolerance. Thank you. Tolerance. There are people I already know that certain things are ever present with them. I've already factored in it. Are we together? Some friends, some different people. I already know that some things will never change. There are people connected to me. I know I will continue giving money all the time. I will never even bother doing any lecture on finance. It's a total waste of time. Some of us, they are our relatives. You know it. You, you, there's no point saying, look, everybody be empowered. You are wasting your time. Just trust God to be empowered very well and create a system around your life that helps them. You will buy sewing machine today. You will buy bicycle tomorrow. You will buy uh, two cows, male and female. The person will sell the other one before six months. There are people who you can't do anything. You need them. They are just careless. You can advise them. They sit down. They are writing. They stand up by next week. They've done exactly what you said they shouldn't do. So you don't forgive. You tolerate. That's not forgiveness. Is God speaking to us? Practice tolerance. Number six. Be a contributor to the growth of the relationship. This is a key one. Very soft what I'm teaching tonight, but it's important. No relationship grows in, indefinitely without a very significant contribution from the parties involved. You cannot continue to be a parasite indefinitely. No. It is not only financial or material things you can give. You can give prayer. You can give a good word. You can do something with your skill. Are we together? You can't be in a relationship with come David Dam. You can't be in a relationship with David Dam and every time you are saying, Ah, David Dam, you are going for ministration. Remember me. Oh, if they give you your God, I beg, leave her for me. It can't be indefinite like that. One day David Dam will say, Look, the level of 
of intimacy you want requires definition of what you are bringing to the table. Because the level of intimacy you require is not general, well-meaning. You want me to remember you while away. What are you bringing? And then you say, okay, I know that you usually get thirsty, so I found where to fetch water for you. You see that? I know that demons attack you frequently, so I've said I pray one hour for you every day. That's a contribution. Listen, let me advise, especially couples, whether you are about to marry or you are married, insist that you must know what you are bringing to the table. Don't generalize because the husband or the wife is nice. Children, you too, don't just say you gave birth to me. You have to, where you get to a certain age, you should be a contributor. Even if it's not finances, you can clean the chair, you can weed the grass. There's nobody under my roof who will not do anything. No. You can't sleep and wake up and eat and sleep and wake up. If you don't pray, you will clean something. If you don't clean something, you must dress something. If you don't dress, you must go on errand. There is nothing that is neutral. Are we together? Any cloth in your life that is not serving you, give it away. Any book you are not reading and you are not going to read, give it away. Let everything in your life be based on contribution. And you will see how your life will rise. Even in your relationship with God, He spelled the terms. He told you the things you will get. I will manifest myself to you. He will anoint you. He will bless you. When they give you a job, they give you your letter of employment. Therein He spelled the terms of your relationship. We do that for every other thing except relationships. Why should Pastor Alpha continue to love Pastor Femi? Why should Pastor Femi continue to love Pastor Alpha? Why should I continue to love you? I've noticed that people don't like me. Have you noticed it too? The person, yes, so I noticed people don't like you. It's a message. One, you may not be valuable, but two, you want relationships that you are largely making parasitic. You are not contributing. I had headache, you didn't call me. When I had my own, did you call me? No. Are we together? Someone has to go out of his way to make relationships work. Be a contributor to the growth of the other party. And then seven, the last one, and we'll stop there. I never knew we'd have to get part three for this. Um, but then practice genuine love practice genuine love let me tell you this one of the most painful thing in a relationship is to discover for someone to discover compromise if i love promise and promise eventually finds out that all the while i really didn't love him i just had somewhere to go and I found out that he can help me get there. So I was nice to him within the period of getting there. Is one of the ways great relationships die. I've seen this happen with pastors. I've seen this happen with business people. Ah, hey, Jimmy, I love you. Morning, he's calling a hey, Jimmy. Night, he's calling a hey, Jimmy. Next week, he's calling a hey, Jimmy. Hey, Jimmy, will I see you next week? And then a door just opens. And there's no a hey, Jimmy again. Because it was never about a hey, Jimmy. It was about me through you. Is your friendship genuine or are you just looking for something through people? Is God speaking to us now? Yes. Do I love you so much? I know how much I love you by how much I can be willing to stay even when nothing is coming from you. There are ladies who started relationships with men just because they are looking for daily bread. And the day the guy just said, Kai, this bread that I sell, Something thieves just came and carried one whole bag of the flour of this. You call again and it's, it's number busy. Because you want to prosper through a man. What of brothers that is just food they are looking for? Because you don't cook. You found out that a sister's hand has been blessed. And all of us, so how are you? It's two days, I've not seen you. Abba. And uh, she said, in fact, I was even thinking of bringing something. Now you are talking. And then the day she tells you that, look, um, sorry, the money to cook is not there. You say, look, I'm, I'm, I'm pressing into God. I'm busy. I don't have time for things of the world again. Our world is such a selfish place. 
Listen, if you ever want to rise through influence, there must be a track record of your genuine love for people. I love Pastor Peter genuinely. I love his wife genuinely. I love all my pastor friends genuinely. Just like many of them love me genuinely. I know you love me genuinely, some of you. Many of you, but not all of you. It can't be all of you. I'll be fooling myself. But I know that at least you love me genuinely. You can be sure that I love you genuinely. I know Jesus loves me genuinely. Is that true? At least, it's, I know Satan doesn't love me, but I know Jesus loves me. I know my little children here love me. They love me more than you by far. Let me tell you, your relationship life is intact when children love you. I've told you this. If children run away from you, it's a sign that there is a presence your understanding is creating. Because children are too innocent to run away from you. I love Jesus. Not just because the Bible tells me so. I love him because he has proven it again and again. And he's poured that same love. I love you. With all my heart. Do you look at all the relationships in your life today? Which one are you using? And which one is real? Hello? We are going to pray. I want you to look at all the relationships in your life today. Which one do you know from beginning that is just a means to an end? Not an end in itself. This guy is a prayer warrior. Let me just use him to scatter this because on my own I won't reach that gate. I've already seen the giant that stands. So let me partner with him. Let me use his voice to open that gate. That's why many of us are not there for those we claim to love when they are down. It's so painful for people to claim to love you and when you are down there's nobody there for you. There are many of our people who are getting married here and there. There are people who say they love them and never bring five naira. Promise you are getting married. Take ten naira. Hey, may the Lord honor you. You know this God that we talk about. You don't love. When you love, you give. You don't give money alone. You give any and everything. Hallelujah. It's true. One of my greatest prayers is for God to help me to continue to love people. It's one of the keys I have found. To the anointing remaining and multiplying upon my life you can be dissipating spiritual energy in prayer and word study and not have love the bible says you are an empty symbol you must genuinely have love not just for god but for me i love god genuinely ask him he will tell you i don't love god because i'm looking for tea i don't love god because i'm looking for bread i don't relate with him just because i want him to meet my needs if I were doing that, then there are many things I would not... Maybe I would just be praying once a week on Friday. Lord bless Koinonia. Thank you. Thank you because there's already rice on my table for Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday. Bless Koinonia. But I love him. I still go back to his presence and say, Lord, I've come again. You are my desire. You are my pursuit. You are my everything. Many of you, it's your relationship with God that went sour, that made everything in your life to go sour. The first relationship to be restored is your relationship with God. Then your relationship with those that God has ever used to bless you. If God used them once, He can use them again. Do all you can to preserve the relationship. Do all you can. There are times I send many people text messages. Just like you don't get replies from me sometimes. I don't get replies from them. But I'm not offended because I know they are busy. The most important thing is that I play my own part to make sure the relationships are there. Maintaining relationship is costly. Maintaining relationship with great men is costlier. Maintaining a relationship with God is the costliest of them all. Because it can cost you your life. You can even die. You will lose a lot of things relating with God. But you will gain a lot of things. You want to relate with people and not lose anything. You are selfish. You must lose something to stay. What are you willing to lose? You must lose your time to gain something. You must lose your time with God to gain the anointing. You must lose your time. There are times that you will have to lose your ego to sit down before an uncommon mentor and hear him talk to you. 
there are times you will need to lose your appetite. You are hungry, but the person talking to you has not finished. You must sit down there. And sit down for as long as he's talking. Relationships. God has used relationships to lift me today. I can't tell you, you know, sometimes I don't even want to share. I like being myself, but I don't want to share testimonies because they are very touching. I'm being very sober with you tonight because I want you to know this is how we gain influence. Relationships. Somebody told somebody about a message that blessed you. Somebody met somebody and gave him a koinonia message that brought you. Even to Jesus, somebody told you about Jesus. Even if he's an angel, he came as angelos, a messenger, to connect you. Let's finish it. Give me five minutes. Let's not allow it go to part three. Number five. And we end for tonight. You want to contend for kingdom relevance. You must be unusually anointed. The last key. You must be unusually anointed. If you are just anointed, you will not do much. You must be unusually anointed to such a degree and such a level that you can do many things for the kingdom through the anointing that is upon your life. Listen, brothers and sisters, those who are generalists in the anointing, generalists, will not do anything much. You will keep competing one result today, no result tomorrow, one this today, no. Every time they invite me, to go for ministrations i am very happy because i know what the anointing is going to do to the people it's going to change their lives those of you who are first timers who have come here now i'm happy because while you are sitting something is happening to you you will get up and go back and wonder it will look like a dream the way god will turn your life around nothing just happens koinonia i will drum this into your life it is what is on you that controls what is around you it first starts from what is in you then it comes to what is upon you then it brings things around you if there is nothing upon you creation will be so harsh to you you will feel like dying is that true unusual anointing the difference between any two people is not the god they believe in the difference between any two people may not even be the revelation they are sharing. The difference between their results, hence their influence, will almost always be the level of grace. When you see what I am doing and you see what Benihin is doing, it's not like he's using a different Bible from me. The difference is the level of anointing. The difference may not even be the dimension of the anointing. It's just the level of it. The difference between 1,000 Naira and 10,000 Naira is nine more 1,000s. Is that true? Sometimes what you need is just more of the same thing. You may not need anything new. Unusually anointed. Unusually anointed. And it will take you places you never dreamt you will go to. Listen to me, brothers and sisters, beloved in the Lord. I bring you the keys for transgenerational relevance. The highest of them is to be unusually anointed. When you are unusually anointed, then you are a blessing. You are not a blessing when you are not anointed. When I say anointing, I don't just mean people falling on the floor shouting, Ah, 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 ah. That's not anointing. Results. The ability to manipulate realities over people. Create a spiritual climate over a man that turns his life around. The anointing. I say to one, go and he goeth. I say to another, come and he comes. Immediately after the grace, there will be several people lining up here to see me. And many of them have issues. Whether I'm able to solve those problems is a different thing. How many people have come to you and you could not do anything about their situations? It's not like you are not anointed. 
but you need to operate at a higher level a higher level a higher level that must be your cry a higher level thank god for where he has brought you but my brother my sister at this level of anointing the nations will not demand your grace at this level is your local environment that will demand your grace at this level of the anointing you need a level of anointing that will cause all men to seek for you as it is now all men cannot seek for you but all men seek for you we are going to pray i want you to be relevant i have taught you the keys number one you must know god number two you must contend for transformation Number three, you must be extremely valuable. Number four, you must master relationships. Even beginning from here, there are people you need in life and destiny. Swallow your pride. Bury your ego and maintain the requisite relationships it will take. So that when you are great and when they are great, even if you are not there, they will pick you through their greatness. Number five, be unusually anointed. The highest of the two riches, when it comes upon your life, then you will find out that principalities and powers will bow. You will find out that all men will seek for you. They will seek for the deposit of his grace that is upon your life. At that point, you will never beg for bread again. At that point, your voice cannot be silenced again. There is no cause and no yoke that will ever silence your voice. Are you ready to pray tonight? We are going to take five minutes. The prayer points are all that I mentioned. I'm just going to allow you with God for the next five minutes exactly. I want you to cry your heart in prayer and say, Lord, I want you to lift me. I want to begin to operate and activate these systems of the kingdom. Lord, I do not know you. Lord, I am not transformed. My limitation has pegged my growth to a point that I'm not able to do much. Lord, I confess that I am not valuable enough. I have flattered myself and gathered around psychophants in my life who have made me feel I'm more valuable than I really am. Lord, I have ignored relationships. I'm a man of God, but I've ignored valuable relationships. I've let my pride get in the way. I've let offense get in the way. And then, Lord, I'm anointed, but I'm not unusually anointed. Lift your voice and pray. Please pray outside, pray those following online. Pray you activate these five things, you have closed the door of mediocrity in your life forever. Doesn't matter what background you come from. Lord, I now see why poverty seems to trace and trail my life lord i now see why no one is willing to listen to me i now see why no one is willing to invest in your hand upon my life take over Take over. I have come to the end of my sin. Take over. Jehovah. I have touched to the end of my sin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have come to the end of my sin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, I have come to the end of my life. Sing it with all your heart. Take over, take over. I have come to the end of my self. Take over, take over. I have come to the end of my self. Hallelujah, hallelujah, I have come to the end of myself. I like you 
to pray let me give you one more prayer point and say lord i will never be small let it be a vow you make with yourself lift your voice and pray lord is a determination the bible says i will multiply them they will not be few i will glorify them they will not be small lift your voice and pray lord i make a determination in the name of jesus christ that i will never never be small there is much to do for the kingdom and in the name of jesus i decree and declare i decree and declare by the anointing of the holy spirit i declare the seed of greatness for the kingdom is within me and i declare that church you have given me will not be small that business you have given me that anointing that grace that career multiply my influence thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side would you mind me giving you one last one i want you to mention all the five points one by one especially for the areas where you know you are lacking some of you you don't have a problem with knowing god but your mind your mind there's something in your mind that is authorizing darkness to prevail over your life some of us were not exceptionally valuable for some of us we have ignored relationship open your mouth and mention them one by one grace oh god grace from heaven grace to press into the things of god grace to know you more grace to know you more in prayer in fasting in the study of the word in corporate fellowship please make sure you are praying love your destiny enough to pray love your children enough to pray love your generation enough to pray lord i cry for transformation something about my background something about my culture something about my sociological perspectives is affecting my life affecting my growth affecting my influence i cry to you oh god of heaven alter my mind alter my thinking alter my paradigm alter my perspectives change my perceptions lord i receive grace to be so valuable to be needed and useful valuable in ministry valuable in business valuable in my career valuable in my profession valuable as a man of god valuable as a woman of god i obtain that grace in the name of jesus lord i receive grace for strategic relationships send to my life men and women that are gates to my next level grant me the fortitude to maintain those relationships grant me the wisdom to maintain those relationships lastly cry for the anointing father send more fire greater fire fresh fire new dimensions of the anointing new dimensions of the anointing expand my spiritual horizon let your hand rest upon me in a way that the nations will know that your hand is upon my life let your hand rest upon koinonia greater results greater signs greater wonders greater dimensions of the operation of the spirit hallelujah please lift your hands let me pray for you our time is this is how people become relevant from absolutely nothing in the name of jesus i stretch my hands the grace that it takes to know god to be and stay transformed to be exceptionally valuable to master relationships and to knock on the gate of heaven until new dimensions come to you i pray that that grace be released upon your life now in the name of jesus christ 
I prophesy to you that where you have been deserted so that no man passes through you, you become an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every force that is fighting your influence, I stand by the anointing of the Holy Spirit and I command that those powers live your life now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I spoke to you about two riches. Whichever you do not have in your life, I command a supply of it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, as a corporate people, we decree and declare that you are increasing our greatness. And you are comforting us on every side. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare and I call you not just a person but a voice. I declare from today be a voice. In your career become a voice. In ministry become a voice. In healing become a voice. In the prophetic become a voice. In business become a voice. In the academics become a voice. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare that no one will be able to silence your voice. What has not been done by your loved ones, by your father, your mother, I empower you by influence to do it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Wave your hands and give Jesus all the praise. Thank you, Jesus. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching